you're alive. All right, awesome. sweet. Uh, this is uh, part two of our last adventure, but I believe, um, Fearless, you're going to handle today's recap if you're all right with that? Yeah. All right. Well, everyone, welcome to the channel. Uh, before we get started, we're going to jump into the recap of last week. Kind of just uh, get us in the mood to play tonight. Remember all the stuff that uh, previously happened. But before we get there, I do want to shout out. Yet again, killer artwork from Lizard Chu. We got the garden pincer. He making the trees. He don't cutting them down. And then we also have the <laughs> tragic carp. He doesn't splash. He slaps. Um, <laughs> he do. He and slaps. both of those, yeah, both of those things, both of those artwork slap too. Those are those are good. <laughs> um, Phyllis, take us away on the recap. So last week on Pookie Mains, we uh we started off barely crossing the um after we, you know, Poke flute the uh, Snorlax and walking past them. A little bit down the road we we ran back into um Wesley, I think was his name. The little kid that we met earlier during his mm -hmm. uh, choosing day. Or I choose you day. And he was battling uh, Power, who is connected to the ferret that uh, Acrilla got off of Jimmy with that scratched up Pokeball. As he was using a Sneasel, uh, we had this Stabilize. Oh, sorry. Confused the two. <laughs> no. They're similar. Okay, uh, the Sable Eye, and he, uh, which had this dark, weird looking shadowy energy around him, which upset Ajax as he kind of sprinted towards, uh, towards him. Once he got there, kind of paralyzed by his own anger, slash also hold, trying to hold back Chimchar. Uh, I don't think he said much to Power before Power just started ranting off on uh, Wesley and Wesley left be before dropping the little hint that uh, he was also sent back in time to quote-unquote help with, with what's going to happen in the future by... <clears throat> I guess getting himself stronger as a small trainer so he would be ready for the upcoming event. Uh, but nobody really decided to battle him because they just kind of was aware of how dangerous those Pokemon can be. Uh, he did mention that, you know, that the shadow Pokemon are kind of stronger than the normal ones are. But that was about it, really. He he didn't, if I remember correctly, he didn't bring up too much of his past other than just the fact that uh, he's aware of them. Uh, and as he walked, as they walked past, uh, him mostly distracted, kind of petting Chimchar. Uh, you know, the, the, the crew just kept on walking as uh, Wesley kind of cut off and offered a... Uh, and asked if we could, uh, if he can tag along, because he wants to go to the next uh, city to uh, challenge the uh, Pokemon trainer there, or the Pokemon gym that's there. So he can get his uh, badge. As we continued, I believe it was Opal who did the uh, research roll of the surrounding Pokemon. Hmm. Yes. Where we, where she remembered the legend of the, uh, of the pincer, and we decided to wait a little bit to see if we could see him and potentially catch him. Uh, Ajax and Chimchar took on the challenge, and it was a tough fight, kind of, not kind of, but uh, 
at the end, Ajax kind of he left it up to he left he left it up to the pincer whether or not he uh, wanted to join him. As Ajax kind of just held out the pokeball and reassured the pincer that his trees would be protected by either other people or the or his own legend, which he of uh, his own reputation that he created. And the group kind of took off after that, after uh, taking a rest outside of the, near the, uh, his trees. And as we were crossing the forest, I believe, I believe Opal was made aware of, she had a flashback to the meeting the stranger and the rivers situation and I think she got a feeling that we would they would need to go into the forest deeper into the forest a little bit off the off the uh, village where we're supposed to head to to deliver the uh, I suck at names the Raticat the, the rat Raticat yeah. uh, and as we're walking through the forest um, Wesley kind of gets distracted by this uh i believe drift bloom and at the same time ajax kind of starts tripping a little bit and he gets sidetracked as he starts sprinting through the forest talking about a master and uh that type of stuff as opal and uh acrylla try to keep up acrylla sends uh Pixel to try to catch up to Ajax, but unfortunately gets surrounded by some Murkrow. And as Ajax continues, he finally comes upon a bunch of drowsies and one Hypno. As he kind of figures out that for some reason, <laughs> there's a council of drowsies. <laughs> And they're asking him to join the set cancel. All right. <laughs> Not about you, but that's what I'm doing. Um, let's go ahead and change this to. I need something creepy. Do I have something creepy? Okay. Um, currently, we have Ajax and Chimchar plus Pinsir surrounded by six Drowsy and a Hypno. They're attempting to take him out of the equation or give him a seat on the council, but not the rank of master. In any case, we also have Opal and Akrilla and their minds of choice fighting against a Drifloon with a cape of Murkrows. One point of order before we get to that crazy fight, which we're about to get to on both fronts, um, is I added an auto catch list, and I'll have that on each map where Pokemon are. And when we leave that area, if you guys would like to use the Pokeballs you have to say you catch one of the auto catch Pokemon, that's fine. Um, rarer evolved Pokemon or just uh, in special cases, they won't be on the list. Like Drifloom's not there, but maybe you catch them at the end of this fight. Tragicarp's not there, but he's a very rare regional variant. Uh, but this way, you guys have opportunities to catch mods, and it doesn't always have to be, like, surrounded by the entire episode. Awesome. So okay. Just something to get used to. It will be when we leave the area. All right. Um, in any case, I also, with my super horrible map-making skills, <laughs> made our fight scene. So let's go to that and... Well, everyone give me a tactics roll while wow, Pokemon only roll a d6. I remember it's unassisted for, for initiative is uh, always just the trainer. Ooh, that's cool. Okay, tactics. Uh, is that the chess piece? Yes. Okay. Cool. Hey. 
Okay, awesome. Right, and then for the hypnos, uh, not the hypno, the drowsies, let's do a d6 for them. A two, and then for the drift loan, a d6, a three. Okay. Uh, wow, you guys are all. So pretty much it's players, then the enemies. So with Acrylic going first, Ajax and Opal can flip whenever they please. But, uh, Acrylic. The Drifloon is kind of flying around with its Murkrow, using a, them as shields, but also to a lesser extent, Wesley is being a shield as well. So, typically when you do an attack roll, we do your roll and your Pokemon roll to succeed. However, if you look at the uh, move actions on this chart at the bottom, oh, okay. it helps you show, like, things you can do to maneuver around the battlefield or to set up for different turns or other stuff. So if you focus on attack, there's a chance you'll hit Murkrow and Wesley instead if you don't commit your move action to trying to get around this creature's defenses. Okay. With that said, what is going through Krilla's mind as she contends with the Drift Loon Murkrow crowd? Um, so you said that the... Murkrow Drifloon is kind of flying around the field right now. Yeah, he just says, I have four, Mo four Murkrow down as reference, but okay. he's got like an entire flock wrapped around him. Okay. Um, and then he's using Wesley as a shield as well. Yeah, and the other children, but most notably Wesley. Okay. What do we got? We got... Uh, I'm gonna tell Pixel to um, kind of follow the Drifloon around as best as he can. Um, his ability, Intimidate, will not work, obviously, until the thing attacks, but just wanted to point that out before we get too far into it. Um, but I'm gonna have him try to bite the, uh, Drifloon. Okay. So let's see if you successfully get around him first with your, with your own role, which can be, uh, tactics or your research. You can kind of figure out the best angle to move. Okay. And then to do a separate role for your attack if you're playing it safe. Research is a D8, so I should probably use that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you're very smart. You're scanning the battlefield. You're figuring out the best avenue to succeed. Excellent. You you got the highest result possible, so it looks like it exploded into a two. Hell yeah. Oh, uh, with your success, I will let you still roll uh, Pixel with support, since you were just so skilled at what you were doing. Oh, so roll, um, You can do a research, research and support? his attack, yeah. You can do, you can do a research with, uh, Pixels, whatever attack you're using Pixel, which I think you said Crunch or Bite? Uh, Bite. Yeah, so go ahead and do Bite, and okay. you can do, uh, an extra die. So, do I put bonus one? Sure. Yeah, 10 plus is a, is a crit. All right, so we're going to use the five. We're going to give you advantage still, even though you did something else, because you had that crit. Uh, and with that crit, you're able to still attack him successfully. Give me... What is it? Oh, bite. Oh, shoot. You're doing super damage. Yeah, that's uh, super effective. It isn't his element, but it is super effective. Yes, that is correct. Okay. All right. So you are going to be doing... Since you got the critical, we should probably get used to uh, Pokemon's crit. So what you can do with the Pokemon's crit is a, is a few things. One, maybe you rescue one of the kids because you can also do like a fictional terrain change thing. Okay. So if you want to remove the, the children or start to get rid of his Murkrows, that's an option. Okay. You can also, with your super effectiveness, just do 
one more point of damage to it in this situation. Okay. Um, I think I'll have um, Pixel just rush the Drifloon, kind of trying to catch it off guard and go in for that bite. And then when he retreats, uh, can he grab a, a kid and move him out of the way? Sure. We'll have you eliminate the kids entirely. Well, you know, eliminate them in a good way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get them out of the situation. <laughs> get them out. I had to think about what I was saying. I was like, wait, this <laughs> wait we're not eliminate ch eliminating children here. <laughs> so okay, yeah, he'll, so yeah. I'll tell him to go in for um, a bite attack because it'll be super effective and kind of throw him off guard thinking that we're going to be more focused on like his murkrow and the children and stuff like that but we're just going on an all-out attack and then i'll tell pixel to get the kids out of there after he attacks okay excellent you see the drift loon gets flustered when you take the children it seems to work him into uh, a literal hot air balloon as he blows up in size oh. and when he when he blows up in size unexpected to you he immediately takes a countermeasure action against uh, against you. You can kind of think of this. So it's similar to D&D, like a legendary action, uh, which means they get to do something off turn, but it's usually not their full play kit. It's just something simple. Okay. Uh, which in this particular case, he's merely going to attempt to stockpile, which is how he gets uh, his bigger side. All right, but it was close. He fails to stockpile, which would make him tougher to defeat. Uh, so he blows up, and then you just see him gas out, <laughs> going back down to his regular size. Okay, anything else for you? Uh, no, I don't think so. Ajax, on the other side, you've got two drowsies, and they keep putting their hands up and making these strange motions that are getting you and your mons dizzy. You've got two mons to order around. What are you going to do? So I'm only battling these two, right? Uh, currently, only those two are in the ring. Okay. Cool, cool. Let's ignore the fact that I was fighting on but doing something to get stop five. Because <laughs> I thought it was that dire. But it works out for me a little bit. Um, let's see. First things first, Jim Char will jump, not getting thrown. For one, so he will jump <laughs> directly in the middle of these two. As well, actually, he'll do that after because it'll kind of work against Pinsir a little bit. I can't control Pinsir, by the way. Oh, oh, you know why? Because you got I updated you to the new artwork and I didn't flip it. Um, but Pinsir will. What will Pinsir do? Pinsir is going to attempt to throw um, this Drowsy with Vital Throw. Okay, excellent. Now, when you're operating them both at the same time, you're only going to be able to fully support one of them with the extra die. Which one will you be supporting, Pinsir or Chimchar? Uh, one of them will be doing his own roll, basically, and the other one will have two. It'll be Chimchar for now. Okay, give me that Vital, vital Throw. Bonus. Wild die. No. Four. Oh, nice. Wow. Um, so generally, ten over is a crit, but also when you get five more than their toughness, it's a, uh, a softer crit in the system, but still like a crit. So, what else are you hoping to achieve here? I want him to throw this drowsy into the other one. Okay, so we can do like a splash damage here. Well, they both take one as you just manhandle the first one, slam him into the second one, and you know what the coolest part is? It takes them both out. Oh, oh. wow. hey -o. And as they kind of roll out, you see Hypno uh, shrink them down and pull them out with his uh, psychic powers. And two more just jump in. 
as the other two go in, Chimchar would... Could Chimchar have acted before they jump in? Sure. Because I want Chimchar to use his, um... His fire spin to create kind of like a fire barrier around... Around Ajax and Pinsir. Like, the three of us, basically. Try to, like, uh, put the barrier... Because they have a barrier right around you. Kind of light it on fire. Kind of, yeah. Wait, okay. Alright, right, let's see. Let's see it. Uh, tactics... Five. Alright, well, five will say that it, it's... That they have to do a move to get in or they'll take injury since you set up the barrier. Let's go ahead and... We got we got fire we got firewalls in here. Why is it like like the one ring thing? There we go. Ooh. This is cool. Real twenty is kind of cool. Let's go. All right, so as you kind of take them over and you get them inside, it's tighter. The drowsies are gonna make a move check to just get inside. Oh, a moment. Let me see if they actually succeed in getting inside or if they're just both going to get burned. A chance for you to do splash damage on these two guys. Uh, let's see here. And we love an AoE. Yeah. Let's get them. Alright, how do I roll just the die? It's not letting me. I'm going to put two, two results in chat right now. All right, one of them gets burnt and the other one gets in successfully. And you see them both look at Chimchar, even though Pinscher took them out, just because they're more immediate with the person that just hurt them. All right, I think that's all you can do, but you did you did a good job. You had a double knockout and a, and a damage on the new one. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's my turn. Okay, Opal, what you got going on? Um, pretty sure all of the Pokemon that we are fighting are all flying types, right? Yeah, uh, Drifloon is ghost flying and the Murkos are fl uh, dark flying, I believe. Okay, so based on the handy dandy chart that Liz provided, I should stick <laughs> with my rock moves. Rock would be very uh, good, yes. Yes. Uh, so, I was kind of hoping that the Drifloon wouldn't just fart out and would actually stay larger, um, but all of my attacks should be super effective against anybody that I aim for, since they're all flying. So I want to try to do a smackdown on the Drifloon specifically, so I would like to have, uh... Geodude move like around like that way and try to aim for Drifloon in the back with a smackdown. Okay. And well die thanks. Uh you don't forget you have a uh, if it's super effective you have a plus two on there. All right. Uh, so the Pokemon, he pulls out of the way here as you give him the command, but when he, when he loses track of you, he's trying to hear you, but the Murkrow wings are too loud, but he's able to successfully just kind of do his smack down. What does that look like? Are you just like chucking a rock at it? Are you leaping at it? Literally. Yeah, just okay. chucking a rock. Just <laughs> chucking a rock. Two birds, yep. one stone kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. you see the drift the drift loan gets hit again. But you, you, you notice something strange every time the drift loan takes damage while he has his cloak. Um, it looks like, not necessarily that it's being healed, but that the Drifloon that you guys are fighting it on its preferred terms right now. What does that mean? Okay. It means trouble. <laughs> cool. Basically, with its cloak on, it's gonna be a lot more difficult than without its cloak, so we need to focus on the Murkrow. Okay. From what I'm gathering. Good to know. Allegedly. 
Allegedly. I can't confirm nor deny. But she, <laughs> but she's right. I'll just say that. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, does that sound good, Opal? You made your move. You attacked. Yep. Sounds good. That's my turn. Uh, the Drifloon looks down at Geodude with the Murkrows. And you see the Murkrows all begin to just kind of flap their wings together, uh, performing some type of like massive uh, dust like track. At least it looks like that, but it's, it's a a haze, but they're using it instead of to eliminate stats, but this is what haze normally does. Let's see if they succeed first off. Uh, there are a group of them, so I have a two. Boom. They will succeed, okay. Um, instead of doing it like that, they're bringing down the haze initially to shroud the drift load. And when the mist kind of comes in and you guys can't see the drift load anymore, the drift load is going to get a, what's called a situational bonus in this game to use its ominous gust. And it's going to blow the haze onto both of your Pokemon. Okay. It gets a situational Wait, situation was usually a plus one. Also well, one through three, but we'll do we'll do a plus one. Oh shit! I crit you guys. Oh god. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Oh lord. I didn't want to kill them. I just wanted to hurt them. <laughs> make me hurt. Make me throw out tragic heart, man. Oh, no. Make me do it. Make me. Okay, so we, we see that on um, Ominous when it says this may uh, this may also raise all the user's stats at once, oh, right? Oh, dear God. So on a crit, the Drifloon's toughness is going to go up. Uh, the, the, he is going to have a, for the remainder of the battle, he is going to have a plus one on his attacks uh, for everything he does. But there won't be any additional damage. But the two of you, with an 11, are absolutely taking a wound. So Pixel no. and Geo, we both suffer one. I don't know if uh, the Im Intimidate's gonna do anything to help that at all, but we do have Intimidate for this round, I think, right? Yeah, it, it is for this round, but on a crit... Uh, Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, it, it's, it makes the roll lower, but it's still a crit. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, as it kind of just swarms over you guys... Actually, the first round of Intimidation would have made the Haze miss. So that's that's important because they're still separate mods. So the haze would miss you guys. So what I'm going to do and bring this down is I'm going to increase his toughness or his stats by one, but not both. Okay. So D2, one, stats, two, toughness, one, stats. Excellent. Okay, the drowsies are up, Ajax, and you see them looking at you, and they're putting their hands together. But what you don't expect is someone playing dirty from the back. The hypno begins to shake his little pendulum. Hip. No. No. Hip. Hypno. And then you just see like this, the world starts to like just shake and vibrate and all this stuff. Um, Ajax, you gotta give me your, your favorite, your favorite stat. Actually, I, you, can, you, you, you could do, uh, you can do, yeah. You could do a heart. Or research. Uh, I'm gonna do heart. Because <laughs> <laughs> he has a lot of heart. <laughs> not much. Not much. Not much else. Um, no Pokemon support. Submit. Okay. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me do a mastery real quick. <laughs> let me re roll that. Perfect, perfect. You, say you do have a mastery, yeah. There there you go. Ooh, that's better. Oh, you son of a gun. <laughs> Your Pokemon were about to have to fend for themselves, I'll tell you that much. Oh, no. <laughs> but now they still got their trainer. However, we'll have it do a semi-effect. This isn't going to be any detriment, but it's just going to help us get some more story. So, as he, he was trying to put you to sleep. So, as he tries to put you to sleep and hypnotize you, as the name implies, um, you begin to get flashbacks of your older life. Are you comfortable and are you willing to share... Obviously, the players are here, but the characters have no idea. Something that is disturbing your character, because that's what the Hypno is trying to bring out of you. Something that is from your past. Just a, just a little bit, not a lot, since you didn't fail. That's this, that was disturbing him? So, something from your past. He, he, he was trying to trudge up 
bad emotions, but he wanted them to be real emotions. Something that maybe you're not too happy about. Just a glimpse. Hmm. Let me think of which one. Oh, they got so many bad things, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So it's kind of like a dream thing, right? Yeah, exactly. It's literally a dream, yeah. Okay. I guess the drowsies and the hypno would just see a scene of Ajax in some sort of arena. A lot of people, perhaps a tournament, as he's uh, mid-battle. Chimchar isn't among his Pokemon. But as as he defeats the final Pokemon in front of him from the other trainer, instead of being crowned the winner of the match, uh, what's the name of the cop lady? What, uh, Rita? No, in actual Pokemon. Yeah. Um. There's Nurse Joy and oh, what's her name? Jenny, Officer Jenny. Officer Jenny. Officer yep. Jenny. Yeah. One of the many Jenny twins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of runs onto the stage as she kind of grabs Ajax, takes away all his Pokemon, and kind of slaps some cuffs on him as he is seen being dragged away as the dream kind of fades to black as Ajax kind of shakes it off okay speaking of shaking off the drowsies both dual kind of launch psychics at both of your Pokemon I don't let me let me double check so since I'm using psychic do I either of your Pokemon resist psychic I'm not sure about Pinsir uh, bug does. Bug is greater than psychic. Okay, so according I would. Chart. Yeah, according to the chart. So that means I'm going to have a penalty on, on the uh, against Pinsir. Yes. So I'm going to need to roll a, a a six exact or and or crit with it to try to even get you. So the first one is going to be for Pinsir with that deduction. Uh, it's going to be a minus two on the roll. Oh, it's only bon it only asks for a bonus. So we'll just we'll just leave it like that. So it's a minus two. So it's an actual two, not a four. So he does not hit Pinsir as he shoots the psychic at Pinsir. Pinsir's able to strong arm through it. But Chimchar, I believe it's just neutral, right? Yeah, neutral. Oh, he does hit Chimchar. So you see a kinetic... The, the secondary text doesn't matter unless it's a crit. But you see the, the kinetic energy just kind of slam into Chimchar's body. And he lifts up Chimchar and crashes him back into the floor. The smaller one and goes, See? As he like kind of digs his face into the dirt. See? Drow. And uh, those are the two drowsy for now. Krilla, you're up. Yeah, so when you Pokedex, remember it takes up your moves. That means Pixel will be by himself in the role. Uh, but the, the information you get could, could be prevalent. You, you, you're not sure. I Pokedex the Drifloon last episode. So... Yeah, you would just need the Murkrow. Uh, but I will say that you get a... Whenever you want a Opal, you could drop a plus one on a roll after the fact from your 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 prior pokédex okay okay you see it says you flip open the thing they awaken at dusk 
and take wing in the twilight, leading to the expression, get home before the murkrow fly. These dark flying type creatures sometimes form close-knit colonies. They say when they form a unit that only the largest of them can be defeated. The rest are invincible. So it's saying that there's a core. You have to take out the core or else the Driftling will never fall. And I don't know which one's the largest. It's probably that guy. Yeah, it's up to you. If you want to be shocked, like you say Amber, but it goes crazy, you can you can like holy crap. Okay, sure. And you have that plus one hanging about. You can do that after you roll. So if it, if it's going to be impossible, you keep it. If it's going to be an extra, use it. Let's see what you got. Okay, excellent. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that works. So you flamethrow the largest Murkrow. And uh, to your surprise, you, you thought you were doing Ember. But as it explodes, do you have any kind of reaction as you see the fire just triple in size? You see him as he unleashes this attack, the largest of the Murkrow get hit. And then the Murkrow just kind of looks at the other ones and starts to, to just quack and make all sorts of sounds. And, and when he flies off, the swarm follows him, removing the Driftloon's invincibility. Ooh. And then one of them crashes into the ground just in case you guys want to catch one later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, that seems like that was your turn. Are you satisfied? Ajax, you're just getting jumped over here. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. so the fire spin stays on for a little bit. Oh, so I'm not moving. Uh. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Chimchar try to flamethrower both of them. Alright, now in in this system, in order to flamethrower both of them, you'd have to crit. Or there is an alternative, you take a penalty to the roll. Uh, how much is the penalty? Two targets minus two. Oh. The target number is four, though, so if oh, you have a D6. Different. I will take the penalty. Uh, bonus, none. Tactics. Smith. Four, five. A five does it. They, they, they're they, just kind of in the air and just shoots down straight at both. Oh yeah, well Tony has these uh these things then I forgot. Do you guys see anything? I haven't seen anything. Yeah. Okay, you do see something. Yeah, it's not showing me, I guess it's only for you guys. <laughs> oh no. Um so you 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 hit them both with the flamethrower and just like the last ones you see them tumble out as Hypno just kind of flicks his wrist and pulls him out as they both faint. 
and the final two kind of jump in. As they jump in, the fires are a little bit easier to get in this time. So we'll do roll fours again, but they'll have um, a plus one on these at the end of the result. Uh, so only one of them makes it as it continues to ping one of them. Nice. And as the one that failed jumps in, Pincer is going to jump up and try to um, crush him with his uh, pincers. Excellent. Now remember, he's unassisted, but he didn't stop him last time. And he's a buck type, so it's a uh, super effective. Excellent. So you get that plus two on top. So, man. Uh, no. Five. Oh, no, that is with the plus two. I rolled the wood. No. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. Pincer's unable to catch him midair. <laughs> Yeah, you see him just kind of lands in front of him, and he just squares up to him. <laughs> yeah, you know, how, like psychic is used like a like to just move stuff. I feel like he catches the pincers, and they're like struggling against each other. Yeah, pincer, right. By the way, you you can tell that pincers eager to please you because you beat him pretty handedly. So he looks he looks kind of sad, but then he points to the two he took out before to remind you that he's useful. Oh, oh. <laughs> Okay. Don't get rid uh, of me, is... I'm useful. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't get rid of me. All right, that's you for now, Ajax. Yep. Opal, there's a, a short opening. The Drifloon is looking around for more allies to summon. You need to take this bad boy out. Cool. Uh, so it's all of, like, the thing that was keeping it immune flew away, right? Yeah, and you guys have realized it wasn't obvious before because you were hurting it, but it actually is at full health. So I'll set that back up. Okay. Cool. Well, I'm going to use SmackDown again, because that's super effective. And I'll call out, Geodude, take him down. Okay. If you want, you can do a heart roll paired with that. Okay. So that's plus two, because it's super effective. And that's a heart roll. Ooh. Ooh, I rolled a huh. I rolled okay. a one for the move, but the heart roll is a six. It's okay as long as one of the get through your task, you succeed. So it's Thanks. a six. We know it's toughness one up from the uh the what was this toughness or stats? I think it was toughness, right? Uh it's stats. I okay, it was stats. Yeah. So so you're able to still cleanly land a blow on him. Cool. And he just kind of looks at uh, Geodude, preparing to retaliate. Dude. Um. Dude. Dude. <laughs> the dude. Uh, I don't want to have Geodude move. I want to have him stay right up there, right in the Drifloon's business. Okay. So... Can I use the move action to boost or to make my next? Oh, let me see. So you, normally you could, but remember when you attack with two dice, it means you're, you're forfeiting your move action. Oh, I gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha, yeah. Okay. We are all good then, that's me. All right, the uh, Drift Loon is up and he's taken to a, a rivalry with Geodude. So you see him go down and as he sweeps over Geodude's head, he is going to try to pass through his body. But as he's passing through his body, almost disrespectfully, uh, launch a uh, shadow ball, ball point blank in his face. Oh. Come on, buddy, you got this. Okay, now remember the roll is unfortunately a plus one, which is not attributed, so that is going to hit. It'll be a four. Mm. As the blob of the ball just smashes Geodude point blank in the face oof, for one wound. And a Geodude's toughness is at a four. Yes, so... it's at four. So if he hits you, set your armor class. So since I hit, you take a damage. Okay. So he shoots you point blank in the face with the, the, the shadow ball. And then you see him lift up his little... I just realized it's a heart-shaped. 
He lifts up these little heart shaped. Uh, it looks like a, a lure on like a rod. <laughs> he wraps it around Geodude's arms to try to like keep him close by. Oh, Geodude, yeah. no. Yeah, with his with his move side, giving him a plus one for his next turn. Wait, does he roll? Did he? No, I didn't roll two dice. Okay. Drowsy. 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 You see both of the drowsies um, look to each other, and you don't know what they're planning, but they nod at you, Ajax. And uh, one of them goes to uh, look at the fire spin and attempts to disable it. But fails as Chimchar's fires are too, too strong to be put out. And then the other one disrespectfully headbuds Pinsir, realizing that his psychics are not as strong. Ooh. He is going to. Luckily, it's not enough to be a true crit because he needs to get five over a 10 or higher or five over your toughness. So use this nine also. Um, but it is enough to push him over the threshold as he slams into Pinsir's body with his head, doing one damage. And you see them look back to the Hypno, who will continue to force Ajax to make that heart or research roll or no, or abandon his Pokemon in this battle. As he keeps hitting you with his, hypno his hypnosis. You begin, you, you begin to waver. As you begin to waver and you, you start to lose consciousness, you see Chimchar and Pinsir get really close to your body when you hit the ground. And they're primed to protect you no matter what. As you go down, do you want to continue that dream? Uh, no pressure if you don't have any more else you want to elaborate on yet. Uh, it picks up as he's in the uh, I guess where am I blanking on words? Uh, Coliseum? The station, or... there we okay, go. there we go. <laughs> the police station. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're fucking uh, right. <laughs> uh, he's kind of in the interrogation room with Officer Jenny as she just kind of is asking a lot of questions about some criminal organization. Ajax just keeps saying, I don't know about any organization. I was just being sponsored by insert company name <laughs> uh, and you know he keeps getting asked questions showing a bunch of documents that he doesn't un really understand uh, after about a couple of hours of this he's finally released and uh, he just sees on the news that he's been kind of linked to this criminal organization who was betting on his matches and I and if he didn't win and casting some doubts over his wins as they found some tampering with Ajax matches due to these uh, unknown organization to him hey. uh, he goes to he goes home sleeps it off when he when he wakes up he wakes up to a pounding on his door as he opens it uh, a sack gets put put over his head as he's tossed into a car and driven off I can keep going Falcon I don't know how much you want me to keep going yeah there's only one discrepancy they definitely put a victory bell over your head no, <laughs> <laughs> oh no get him boys We'll, we'll leave it there for now that you can't they put you in the car and they drive off i think that leaves it mysterious and it's really fun Damn. Uh, <laughs> yeah we can't we can't give them the whole cake just a little piece <laughs> uh, so as you get driven off though your pokemon are left to fight for themselves the jobs look at each other they bro fist each other and uh the fight continues akrilla Geodude is getting harassed heavily by this Drifloon who now has him restrained and just shadow balled him point blank. Mean. Drifloon is evil. 
Um, I am going to... Uh, let, me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. I am going to... Um... Can I tell Pixel to run and kind of use Geodude as a springboard and go in for the bite on the Drifloon? Because I feel like if I go in at any other angle, he'll just try to use the, the Geodude as a shield. Um, so if I go straight through and like springboard off of Geodude and go in for a bite for the Drifloon. So give me a move first, because now Geodude is what's called an arena hazard, which I should probably be writing down here. Um, and then to see if you can get around without hurting Geodude. So what happens with the arena hazard is, so let's say you miss Drifloon, there's a chance you hit Geodude instead, which would knock him out. Okay. So if you're actually doing your move action to try to get around the obstacle. Okay. Would that be like one of my moves, like helping hand uh, or? Yeah, so that like would be your, like, <laughs> so you could do like a research to do your best angle or since it's a battle tactics is always the default. Okay. like. Through wild die or through helping hand? Uh, through through Acrylis sheet herself. Oh, okay, sorry. Because yeah, right now you're doing your own roll. Okay. So when you roll with your Pokemon, it's the Pokemon sheet, but when you do your own roll, it's just you. Okay, and do it through research, you say? Uh, research or tactics. For you, research is more recent. Research, okay. Uh, no Pokemon support? Uh, no, because uh, he's uh, Pixel needs to do a bite, so that's his action is the okay, bite. Okay, okay, gotcha. All right, you. So with a three, you are not going to get around the thing, the uh, master. Um, not the master. You're not going to be able to get around the uh, the obstacle. There we go. Which okay. means you can still bite him, but Drifloon does have that situational plus one, uh, which means you have to get through a five toughness. Okay. Or run the risk of hurting Geodude, I assume. Or, yeah, so if you miss, there's a chance you'll hurt Geodude. You'll just make another roll flat against Geodude. All right. Um, hmm. I don't want to hurt Geodude. He's already hurt. <laughs> um. Uh, oh, oh, at any point in time, Opal can tag a plus one onto your, your attack, for example from the dex entry which oh, i'm sure yeah. opal doesn't want geodude to get a hit either yeah right. for sure so if that would help feel All free right. uh oh. technically you could use that to turn the research roll into a success for geodude because you need a four to succeed and you've got a plus one for anything involving driftler we want to do that or you could put on the attack if you want to make sure the damage gets through it's up to you I would rather free Geodude, personally, right now. And then I go in to attack? Like, well, would my springboarding off of him, like, free him from Driftbloom? If you were to succeed in your research roll, yes. Okay. Oh, cool. Do you want to use that then? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Absolutely. We'll use that then. Okay. So you would free Geodude, and now you would just do a regular attack without the circumstantial penalty. Okay. So we got bite. No bonuses or anything like that. It's just a bite by itself. All right. Well, it's it's got the plus two because it's uh, super, super effective. Super effective, yeah. Which makes it a four. E nice. Okay. You deal one damage onto that, leaving an opening for hopefully Opal to end that fight in a moment. As Drifloon just goes, hello. Excellent. Good job, Pixel. I keep, I keep wanting to say, Pixel, Pixel. I know, so, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ajax, you are... Uh, so, Ajax, you'll get a chance to wake up at the end of your turn, but it does mean that Pinter and Chimchar have to fend for themselves around. So they each only have their roles to depend on. Uh, how are your Pokemon... How do you think they'll act in this situation? I know Chimchar probably cares about you deeply. Pinter is definitely concerned. What's going on here? Uh... Chim Char, well, Jim Char does care. He's a little bit more of the. Uh, he's a firm believer of the best defense is a good offense. <laughs> so he will uh, kind of. Uh, 
he will just kind of jump off and try to do the flamethrower thing again. All right, it'd be a, a minus two, but you might be able to knock them both out. successful oh god you see them both use their psychic and one of them uses the psychic to hold back your flamethrower and the other one uses it to trip up chimchar there's no uh, mechanical disadvantages obviously just the fiction i guess pincer would he's not as used to the uh i guess he's not as used to fighting as chimchar well no he fought a lot of the People just trying to mess with his trees. Yeah, he'll he act like dragon. Ajax is one of his trees, and he will try to chop this pincer up. Fueled by his garden. <laughs> Grazi's like, "Why are you looking down here for? No, 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 chop him down." Pincer uses prune. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, J J Drowsy just kind of screams, oh, 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 and you just uh, you just see that one faint from the pincers assault. As Pincer turns to look towards the other one and just kind of snaps his um. Uh... It's Pincer. <laughs> pincer. It's funny because yeah, <laughs> they're pincers. <laughs> Weird name. Guys, Gen 1 was totally creative. Right. <laughs> what should we and call I... this bug with pincers? Pincer. Pincer. <laughs> I guess that's my turn. And I get a reroll, right? Yes, you can try to use heart to wake up, hopefully. I'm not even mentioning research. No. Oh, oh <laughs> god. The dice Dude, have I've not been, been your friend today. We're learning so, so much about you. <laughs> you're so deep. You're so deep in your... Uh, your your dream probably really invested in it. It's like it's really happening right now versus just a dream. But all right, Ajax, that's you for now. Opal, you have a chance to take this Trifloon out of the fight. Absolutely. Um, we'll have Geo Dude uh, go around to the side, so like much less of a opportunity to hit Pixel. And will tried and true try to smack this Drifloon down. I want to pop this balloon. Drifloon's looking at you like if you don't take him out, he's gonna take you out. It's do mm. or die now, or do or fail. All right, him. let's freaking go, buddy. Do. Okay. Uh. -huh. Plus two. Oh! 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 oh. oh. Not, not <laughs> only are you gonna take him that. out, you're about to obliterate. You're about to freaking Exodia Kaiba <laughs> right now. Uh, walk <laughs> us through Geodude's insane ferocity to finish this fight. Um. I really think that, uh, like, grabbing Geodude's hands and arms and everything to, like, restrain him really pissed this guy off. And as soon as Pixel lets, gets Geodude free, like, Geodude is, like, flexing these stone hands like and fingers and just, like, trying to almost, like, gathering strength. And as soon as it's his turn, he just winds up like a pitcher and just like slams a rock right into this Drifloon and puts it on the ground. Jeez. Okay. Which proposes the question Are we going to catch this third bag or let him go loose? You catch him, it's still it's still a roll. He has a chance he can break free. Um, or we can, if you don't agree with how this Pokemon behaves, in, in Pokemon, Pokemon usually just flee when they're defeated. Is there any point to catching him? 
Not really, unless you want this uh, solely, unless you want him on your team. I don't think I want him on my team. Okay. You see him hit the ground as Yudu insults him. He's scaled for a while like uh, Yamcha. And the moment he gets a chance, he slips into the woods. Unless, uh, Akril, I know it's not your turn, but if you want to try to catch Drifloon, you can as well. Uh, no, but can I get, um, can I just, like, do a quick little sketch? Absolutely, yeah, do a re research roll on him. Oh, should have done, like, a John Cena smackdown. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh, <laughs> it's very sloppy. <laughs> sloppy and fast. And then the Merkel, Merkel looks around. Yeah. Huh? Crow, oh. Mer Crow. I, I, I do, can I, can I interact with yeah. the Murkrow. Sure, what do you want to do? Okay, I want to um, go and make sure that he's okay and kind of kneel down towards him and be like, hey buddy, sorry that we attacked you, are you alright? Oh! He like starts like really exaggerating with his wings, like like how crazy everything was. No. Oh, bro, bro! I love him. <laughs> um, I want him. <laughs> Mark? You he points to himself. Team, buddy? He looks around at all the Murkrows just kind of fucking around in the trees, doing nothing with their lives. <laughs> he, he, you see hearts in his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. I love him. <laughs> I'll uh, pull out a Pokeball. Maybe, maybe and... a little too much. <laughs> I'll pull out a Pokeball and put it right in front of him for him to headbutt. <laughs> It's a dishonest. It's, it's 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 sad you don't have the love balls, but he jumps in. No, oh, I love him. <laughs> All right, and as you kind of secure him, uh, Wesley and the other kids snap out of it, and uh, one of the kids is uh, really big, and the uh, the town you can see that you're you're not too far from the entrance. So he takes the kids and he goes, "Oh my God, we have to get home!" And they just start running off. There's like three or four kids following the big kid. And Wesley just looks at you guys. What happened? What? Wesley, are you all right? Yeah, I was. I heard a, a voice in my head that to to follow it to the to the promised land. What is that? Um, I think that's heaven, buddy. You, it's you baseball were in, green. Yeah, you were in some real danger there. Yeah, Drifloon was trying to take you guys away air quotes mm -hmm. i thought pokemon were for children <laughs> yeah uh, not all of them bud and he uh he is well we have to find ajax what if he's in danger yeah we do need to go find mm -hmm. ajax pixel do you still have ajax's scent Rallis. <laughs> He's, he just kind of gets stoic and then starts running off. Oh, I love him. <laughs> uh, Opal will uh, put an arm around Geodude and thanks, buddy. We'll get you to a healing center like as soon as we can, I promise. And we'll walk off or follow Aprila and sure. Pixel we to do the council have... meeting. We do have extra citrus berries. I don't know if we want to use them for healing purposes on our Pokemon, or if we can, or there are those jelly donuts and things like that, too. So Ajax has the jelly donuts. You could use the citrus, just because said if you run out before you get the Rattata to the facility, it could die. Right. Just saying that is an option. Well, let's hmm. wait until we see what Ajax is dealing with, and then... We'll think about it because it looks like there's a town over in that direction. Maybe there's something there. Sounds good. Let's go find Ajax. All right, uh, you guys run deeper into the brush, and with Pixels has a uh, you have support. You can do a research roll, Aquila, okay. and then you have your you have your your Pokemon support from from uh, Growlithe. Oh God. <laughs> It's okay. The the uh the woods, these woods are meant to be like an illusion. It's as you get deeper and deeper into the woods, you're starting to wonder if you're getting lost, which does finally bring me back to the drowsies. 
at the bottom of the order. The drowsy looks at Pinter and Chimchar. And I'm gonna roll a D2. A one is for Chim and two is for Sir. Uh, so for Chim, you see him lift up his hands and he goes, Drowsy! And grabs Chimchar and slams him into the ground with psychic power for one wound. And you see him look back to the Hypno and the Hypno just kind of nods in agreement. Now Ajax, you're so unconscious until the end, but it's two versus one. Surely you can take this. and try to uh, it's gonna be kind of a little combo thing Pince is gonna try to you know pin him <laughs> I guess <laughs> as he's Chim- the <laughs> as Chimchar goes in for a for a punch as Pincer tries to hold uh, Drowsy down so Pincer first Excellent. He grabs a hold of Drowsy, uh, dealing a damage to him and setting him up for Chimchar to come in with that, those fists. He goes. He goes. Yeah, Drowsy is used to the psychic powers and pain, but you notice between the two that your fist kind of breaks onto Drowsy's face. And between Pinter and Chimchar, you do take him out. Uh, and then the Hypno, you just see him. It's He shudders away with his hands the, the flames and the, uh, the portal. As he disperses the portal, the flames just kind of go with it. The Hypno walks up to you guys. Chip. No. Cracks his neck. And you see him begin to unzipper his face. Oh he, no, what? He is not a hypno. I hate this. As he unzippers his face, he reveals his true colors. That he's a Gemini hypno. And they mean business. Oh. Okay, so a Pokemon. I figured it was just gonna be a dude named like Larry or something. <laughs> you see him uh, put his fist together. And you hear a, a trainer from behind, behind uh, Chimchar and Pinter hear a trainer from behind. You shouldn't fight him. He's beyond you. As this guy comes in, Banksy, they'll need our support. And you see this radicate named Banksy come in. And uh, uh, Picasso gets over Ajax's body and checks him and he says to the Hypno, you and your master leave this place and free him from your delusion. Hypno looks at his hands and counts his fingers. You know who I am. I've been through these parts. I've tossed with your master. Release the boy to me and we need not come into conflict. He looks back and his master comes out of the trees with two Geminar drowsies by his side. And uh, as these Geminar drowsies come out, you can see that Hypno in the Geminar region has an evolution stage. He has a, uh, he can evolve. And you see Hypno bow down as Magnipo comes out. With two Geminar drowsies. Magnipo looks around at Picasso Ooh. and he puts up the hand, you know, like the capiche, sim- like when you put the fingers together and shake <laughs> it a little bit. You come into my forest. Yeah. <laughs> you tangle up my trees. <laughs> um, the Ajax in your mind, you hear uh, the Magnipo uses mental powers. You know, sometimes the Pokemon, the psychic Pokemon and stuff, or the ghost Pokemon can say stuff in your brain. But as you're dreaming and as you're driving the car, um, the car stops in the middle of a road with a large creature right in front of you. 
Uh, and Picasso looks at him and says, Be gone, Magnipo. You don't want this fight. And Magnipo says to you in your mind, Ajax, Me and you, we ain't done. This is just the start. I've got your number now, Capiche. <laughs> and he walks off with a minute gang walk off. Mob boss Magnipo. Yeah, Magnipo is the big boss Pokemon. <laughs> and Picasso uh, shakes Ajax awake. You're all right. Reflex as a reflex, Ajax, as soon as he wakes up, tries to like elbow Picasso in the face. My ribs! Oh, <laughs> oh no! Oh. As, as he just kind of gets up really quickly, looks around to see how his Pokemon are doing before, uh, you know, assuming a fighting stance, he just goes, Who are you? What are you doing here? Where am I? What happened? Are you in the Council of Six Stones? You are being recruited to the Mafia. You see a bunch of knocked out drowsies. These poor drowsies work for a powerful Pokemon called by Nippo, the big boss Pokemon. It just kind of still wary, kind of calms down a bit. Fought my way out of one organization. I'll find my way out of another. Good, because once Magnipo has his sights on the trainer, you you will have to contend with him in the future. For now, I was able to convince him to leave, but Magnipos, when they get worked up, are almost unstoppable. So be prepared for when that fight comes. Your Pinter and Chinchar need to be way stronger before they take on a creature like that. Anyways. I have a cap nearby and some natural remedies that could bring you and your Pokemon back up to par for any other challenges in this place. And then he tells you, get in your feet, Ajax. Trouble must near. I, I, I need to find the rest of my group. And as he says, says that uh, the trouble nearing is he's a pixel running through the woods as the rest of you guys meet up with him. And you, just, you guys just see like a small army of drowsies knocked down. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, Jax. He, uh, Wesley runs and chucks a rock at Picasso's head, but Picasso luckily dodges. <laughs> what happened here? You just see Ajax, like, scratching the back of his head. I, I don't know. I, I, I got here got surrounded by a bunch of drowsy I fell asleep halfway through it I guess Chimchar and Pinsir took care of the rest as he'll kind of you know Chimchar would you know hop on his shoulder and he would just kind of uh, I guess tap Pinsir's head and you know just the both of them just go you did you guys did Good, good job, guys. I'm just gonna nine. use Pinsir as a little mini cane. <laughs> He's still kind of out of it. Geo dude looks at Opal, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like there's so many just passed out drowsies. What the? Picasso tells you all, the forest will only get more dangerous. Fortunately, you're too deep in it to find your way out during the night. I have a camp nearby. I'm here doing research on the wildlife. You are free to stay there or find your own pace if you don't trust me. But I did my best to help your friend here. Come on, Banksy. That Kate. There was a town. The, the, we saved a bunch of kids from a, a drift loon and there was a town that they were running towards. But I don't know if we make our way back, if we'll be able to find it. You can try your luck, but since it is night, it is doubtful you'll ever escape these woods in one piece. We should... He's offering us help, we should take it. Do you trust him, Ajax? 
mean, I was I was knocked out. He had no reason to wake me up. So. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, if you don't mind, uh, what was your name, Picasso? Uh, if you don't mind yeah. us setting up shop near your camp, we would uh, really appreciate it. It's fine. We'll give you all your Pokemon a chance to stretch their legs. Besides, the natural remedies I have can help you with your wounds. It seems like all your Pokemon are hurt, but there are no Pokemon Center out here. Hmm. That would be amazing. Thank you. Yes. I'll give my Pokemon all a chance to stretch their legs as well. I'll continue my research. Um, I'm assuming that Opal would have taken the Rattata back from Acrilla at some point on our way, and uh, I'll just have him in like the arm that's not around Geodude and be like, look, look over there, that's the Raticate. You'll turn into that someday, won't you? Ta -ta -ta -ta. He look. Yeah. He's he tried to be excited, but he's so weak. But he smiles at you. Yeah. And uh, when we get to this guy's camp, uh, we'll give him his citrus berry for the day. Okay, awesome. And I did actually give you guys the ability to edit it to make it easier to uh, track. If you go to your player resources, your handouts new, you've got your citrus berry, which you guys can edit. Yeah. I don't know if you can edit the title when I give you guys permission. Can you edit the title? I don't know. Citrus is I a can, bad, so. yes. Okay, good. I know you can edit the uh, text entry area, but I wasn't sure about the title. Okay, as you guys get to the campsite, I think that that is the perfect place to take a brief 10, and then we'll finish the last 30, 40 strong. Sweet. All right.
stream. We are live again. All right. Welcome back to the game. Usually we take our breaks about halfway through. And by usually, I mean never. We take them in the last 30, 40 minutes because we're bad. We're bad people. In any case, um, the trainers, you have all gathered at a campsite with this uh, Picasso fella. As you guys get to the campsite, this is the perfect place to stretch your legs, toss out your Pokemon, and have them all over the place. The campsite is filled with fireflies. Are there regular bugs in the Pokemon world? I don't know, but there's fireflies here. Don't try to capture them. <laughs> your Pokemon would have kind of spread out and done their own activities. Tragic Carp is being an asshole. He's off by himself, all tragic like. Oh, uh, no. is hanging out on the stump. Uh, and then there are quillfish in the water that are just kind of watching you guys. Wondering what uh, what you guys are up to in these 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 here parts. Uh, Pinter has started to plant his own herbs. It looks like he's growing weedles without the le. Mm. Um, do we have a Picasso, do we have a map? It's still on the countdown. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna move it move it. Okay, here. okay, sorry. Um, no, no, you're good. Uh, and then uh, Picasso sent out his his team of Pokemon, which is very unique, including one new uh, new. As it's called online, fake mon, but from our, our new Gemini regional character. And here is the uh, the campsite. Oh my God. Oh, tragedy. Go, go. Hmm. Quillfish. Chimchar and Ophelia hanging out. Yeah, I feel like Chimchar's looking after Ophelia. I don't think she, he'd pick a fight with Ophelia since she's so cute and cuddly. Yeah. Murkrow just has his hard eyes. He keeps staring at the back of the Krilla's head. I feel like <laughs> Pixel's like, Grr. Oh, a little <laughs> sibling rivalry. Pixel, be nice. Huh? <laughs> He's just being friendly, but it's okay. Now, I don't know if what you guys want to talk around about the campfire for the last portion of the game, but uh, of course you can interact with Picasso, call him over if you'd like. But also, you guys, are, you handle two different things. I'm sure Ajax is like, you know, what happened with you guys? And you're probably like, what happened with him? Uh, but anyways, the floor is yours to explore, to talk, to hang out, whatever. So this council of six thing. It's just, it's just nuts, man. It's incredible. I'm so glad you had like two good fighting Pokemon with you. Yeah, I mean, I knew Chimchar could handle himself, but I'm happy to see that Pinsir can as well. Really living up to his legend. Yeah. But that... That weird looking drowsy or whatever is gonna be an issue for sure. Hm. Yeah, real mob boss energy. Yeah. We should probably talk to the... Oh, the man, if he has any other information that would be useful. But uh, Ajax would kind of call over Pinsir and um, Chimchar as kind of he would have in his hand that uh, hidden power uh, TM. As uh, he kind of holds it out and he kind of offers it to both. Uh, Chimchar just kind of waves it off and just goes back to chilling on that rock next to Ophelia but uh Pinsir kind of steps up and uh would uh grab it sir he shot sir as he will try to unlock his hidden power okay you know what to do that 1d18 it better not be grass <laughs> <laughs> if it is grass we gotta we gotta talk <laughs> Yeah, this like, game is rigged. 
It would make sense because he's, you know, he planted the trees and was growing Dude. trees and stuff. Dude. So. Okay, that is fire. Hidden power, fire. Excellent. <laughs> Bruh. Maybe he's he it got inspired by Chimchar in your fighting spirit. Oh no. You, you see him put his hands together and he shoots out the fire. He's a little worried because of the trees. He doesn't want to burn the trees down. Well, great power comes great responsibility. He looks at you and he uh, he looks you deeply in your eyes. Not the same way Murkrow looks deep into Krilla's eyes. He looks <laughs> at you and he just wants to know, like, did, was he enough today? He just would kind of put his hand over his head. And you're like, you did a good job, Pincer. Happy to have you on my team. Rattatat agrees with you. Tat tat tat. Sir. Okay. Um. Tragic car just turns around. His back is not facing you guys. <laughs> I'm a little punk. You could sit over here with us. Like, you don't have to be over there. I'm gonna go pick him up. <laughs> I'm gonna go pick him up. Okay, and gonna... I bring him over. And I'm the Ratatas very nicely, you know, on the ground in its little cage. And I just sit down cross legged next to Geo Dude with a little asshole of a rock fish in my lap. <laughs> he tries to slap you, but he, uh, the way he succeeds, you have three toughness. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I really hope these love balls kick in soon. <laughs> yeah. Which Ajax doesn't know yet either. Yeah. I'll look, I'll look over to Acrylla and be like, I really hope these love balls kick in soon. Like, what the heck is this? <laughs> yeah, Jag. He's, he's very uh, lively, that one. Hey, um, hey, Ajax, what kind of Pokeballs did the, uh, professor give you? Just the normal kind. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we apparently just got normal balls while you got some love balls. I did. <laughs> I think, uh, I think the professor's trying to tell you something. I think so too. I'm kind of glad we're not in town right now. <laughs> <laughs> Need to lock your doors. What happens on I Choose You Day? I've never had one of these. Is this normal? You know what? Maybe she was trying to choose you. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> that's the vibe I'm getting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, my crow. That's right, Murkrow. He knows about the love. <laughs> <laughs> Murkrow chooses you, Acrylla. <laughs> yeah, he's... If you, if you make Murkrow art, you gotta make his eyeballs hearts. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> that was the plan. <laughs> that was absolutely the plan. The Looney Tunes, Awooga. Awooga. <laughs> he's, he's got some big feelings. We'll work through them. <laughs> I'm gonna go, um see what Picasso is up to and, and talk to him a little bit see what he's here researching I'm curious yeah cause you're researching too maybe you guys can swap notes yeah that's what I was thinking and I'll, uh, okay. I'll walk over to him with uh, Pixel in tow cause he is always following me of course yeah you see Picasso talking to his Pokemon Vanji you must be better you must stroke like this Smurgle? Smurgle. And he, they're painting. Fancy. Your name will be famous one day. They'll talk about you all over the globe. The one true rat to Kate. And you there. WK. My rival of the Pokemon. Grimstroke. Grimstroke. 
And he uh, turns to you. Oh, young lady. I hope I, I tried to move my camp further since I knew we're strangers to each other. Am I disturbing you? I can move a bit down. No, no, not at all. I just wanted to come in and say thank you for helping um, Ajax back in the in the woods and giving us a place to stay and uh, healing, offering to heal our Pokemon and everything. I really appreciate it. Of course, of course. In this world, we must look after each other. There's evil organizations. There's big boss Pokemon. We have to have each other's back. Be prepared to sketch our features. I agree. What What did you come here to research? I'm I'm curious. I'm myself am also researching. Um, kind of just trying to research Pokemon and and see how they are in their in the wild and and things like that. Precisely why I'm here, Grimshrug here, which I've nicknamed WK. He was from these woods. He is the sketch Pokemon, but he's a ghost as well. I have not seen another of his species in these parts for a long time. But every now and then I want to bring him back here so he can feel like he's at home, as well as see if I can find more Grimshrugs. But I've also been watching the big boss Pokemon. He's a dastardly fella. I've come into conflict with him once and he nearly defeated me. The thing is, he doesn't like a hard fight. And he only fights when he absolutely has to. Luckily, Ajax took out a good portion of his militia, so I was able to convince him to flee. Yeah, why, why is he targeting people? What, what does he have beef with us for? He didn't want anything to do with me or Ajax. He was planning on making Pinsir and Chimchar part of his gang. They would work all day, non-stop, with little reward. Oh, man. He was going to steal Ajax's Pokemon. I didn't have the heart to tell the young man. Yeah, that's definitely no good. How long has he been doing this? He's been in these woods for the last year. He's been pushed out of his natural habitat, which is closer to the safari zone to the north, but not exactly them. Wow. Well, I imagine we'll have to fight him at some point. In the future, we all have our battles. For now, enjoy the night. Take your paints. Draw. And feel free to come join us, too. I do have this bottle of shrub. Shrub? Yes, it's a PG version of liquid. That is, makes you googly. Oh, okay. Sounds interesting. In fact, I've been hitting it too hard, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> He's got a drawing of a match app nestled in his arms. Yeah. <laughs> Bensie, watch the camp. Fan Genie, continue your efforts. Grimshook, let's go get some fire. <laughs> and he walks over to you guys' camp. Hello. Right, halfway to the camp, Akrilla, he gives you this. You look like a researcher as well. Just like me. I found this book of an ancient Pokemon. I think it's some type of rooster, I think you'll agree. Trust me, it's our work to fix as much. But perhaps you can use this as one of your future sketchbooks. Ooh. A rooster? <laughs> this is an unknown beautiful. Pokemon, a far off plane. It looks like a rooster, wouldn't you agree? Resembles, I suppose. Some Kinda... fool tried to tell me that it was lizard like. I immediately laughed my A off. <laughs> I mean, I also see that it almost looks kind of like a drake, almost with horns. I'm not sure. This is extremely 
well done. Where did you find this? I found it in the caverns, close to my village. I was trying to find something called an unknown. And this book appeared out of nowhere. I thought it came from some distant land or the past or the future. Who knows when dealing with the unknown? I will definitely put this to use. This is amazing. Thank you so much. Of course, of course. You sit down by the fire. It was so cold over there. You guys want some of the scrub? <laughs> um, I'm okay, but thank you. What is it? It's that good stuff. Hey, Geodude, do you want to try some of the good stuff? No. <laughs> you know, good stuff. Pinter would bring over some of those leaves. <laughs> oh my goodness! Gonna make a new friend. <laughs> if somebody gets hidden power like water or something, I swear to God, we'll have the grass and the fire, and then water. There, uh, do a bomb. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm just sad there's not a hidden power air and we can't have the avatar. I mean, there's flying. Yeah. Hmm. Ajax, I don't. Chintra walks over to you and proposes tonight's dinner. Oh my god! <laughs> He looks at Picasso and he's like, I'm not much of a cook. Do you know how to cook that? <laughs> we not. Good sir, we cannot cook a quail fish. Only the normal fish in the pond. <laughs> he looks at Ch Chimchar. It's a no-go, Chimchar. <laughs> he blows off steam and walks off. See him, he kicks the quail fish back into the pond. <laughs> oh my god. His allies swarm to him and spit water at Chimchar and swim off. Oh my god. Oh. I'm pretty sure those are poisonous. What do you think, Tragic Harp? Are those things poisonous? Tragic. Tra he tries to slap you again. <laughs> Little asshole, dude. I'm about to put you back in the ball, you know? Mm. He looks at the ball, and then he looks at you, and he just he just uh, lays lays in your arms, and he starts he starts sucking on his fin. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Oh my god, he got a nine at splash. Oh my god, <laughs> that fucking asshole. Yeah, he, That's he, a crit. He, yeah, he slapped the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that's hilarious. So much that the Radicate was just like, God damn! Like, oh no! <laughs> so, Picasso, how are you guys? Uh, what are you traveling through these forests for? What are you trying to get to? Um, I'm trying to get to the Avatar. Trying to get to the Avatar. Um, we're headed to a place called Ambervale Village. Ah, the elusive Ambervale Village. While you're there, you should stock up on the amber it is a kind of substance like honey um it's very healthy hmm. it's twice as good as those jelly donuts which remind me of rice cakes back in my country <laughs> oh we could definitely use some healing stuff that's for sure also they say some of the older trees there that have died. Died. Rare rocks. You have my attention. Yes. You see, the amber they use to produce these healing properties, which is really unknown why these trees produce these powerful healing energies. But trapped inside the amber, a fossilized Pokemon. 
there's a place in this world that they can be revitalized and brought back to life. At first, I thought you were carrying the fossil, but it appears to be a living, breathing Pokemon. No, this is just an asshole. He looks like a fossil, though. I see. He, he draws a picture of an asshole with a tragic carp on it. <laughs> Yeah. Striking resemblance. <laughs> yeah, that's... Oh, fossilized Pokemon, though. That sounds amazing. <laughs> I would love to see. I'd love to see. He laughs and goes, Yes, of course, I shall trace you a map there. And he uh, tries... He shows you how to exit the, uh, the forest. He tells you, Throughout the day properly navigate this but at the night the trees quite literally shift and move about this forest is a living breathing world this forest is awful the grim shook looks at you grim shook it's my home it is <laughs> it's my neighborhood <laughs> you got too many bugs here sorry pincer yeah, Fitz is like, God, man. <laughs> just offend, just offend everyone around the fire all at once and get it out of the way. It's There's fine. Too many bugs here. It's creepy. <laughs> we got attacked. Kids were going to be taken away. Like, this forest is the worst. Yeah, you see, Rat Radkey wants to know if you hate rats. He's looking at you. <laughs> no, Radicate. I love rats. You're safe. And uh, Picasso goes, well, if that's all we have to discuss about today, perhaps I'll get some rest. If you guys didn't want any more of that, uh, that lean, you let me know. <laughs> Thanks, Picasso. I think we're good, but thank you. All right, Grim Trope. Say goodbye. Trope. What an interesting Pokemon. Right? Acrylo will kind of look at uh, the book that the P Picasso gave her and uh, call Ophelia over to kind of get her back with the group and, and ask her if she's seen anything like this and show her it and just get her involved, mm -hmm. basically. She just kind of <laughs> turns her head and looks at the pages. She flips through the pages and she's able to smell it. And then there's just a blank page. And there, on the blank page, you see her grab some of the wet uh, mud and splash it in this it's hiding words oh well aren't you clever I'll pick up and, uh, some more mud and kind of splash it on there to reveal hopefully more yeah as you uh you can do a research roll to see how much you can gather tonight I'm a noob! Okay, uh, research. Okay, yeah, it's a great research role. Uh, you see the passage, I'll put it in chat after I say it. Uh, but it says, uh, you must find the rock, steel, and ice. Beepity bops. Literally says beepity bops. It does. Okay. <laughs> I love that. Rock, steel, and ice beepity bops. What is a beepity bop? Anybody have any idea what a beepity bop is? Ooh. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Rock, steel, and ice. Huh. Are you are you sure you didn't get into some of that good stuff? Is that really what it says? <laughs> yeah, it says beepity bop right here. I'll uh, turn the book towards Opal to show her. It, I have huh. no idea. Okay. Uh, Opal, do you want to do a research roll as well? I do, actually. <laughs> I'm curious now. I'm curious. <laughs> It did say rock. <laughs> yeah. Ajax hears research. He probably goes and hides. Uh, <laughs> you nerds. He'll give it a try. He'll give it a try. He might. Sure, sure. There might be a nugget in there somewhere. <laughs> 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 when I don't 
I think it's. I think it's. Oh, 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 Exploded I twice. I think it's a band. <laughs> it's a band. The Bebe Bob. Cue that. Cue that one. That I one song. That one. Be, <laughs> okay. Uh, it, yeah. Ajax wasn't lying when he said he's gonna give it a go. Jeez, <laughs> give it all. You know what? You know what the issue was? He doesn't put on his glasses. Like so put on his glasses. <laughs> Okay, um, Ajax, you you discern it, and you you get, you realize that these are coordinates leading to three supposed legendary Pokemon: Reggie Rock, Reggie Steel, Reggie Ice. Oh, um, aren't they from Seno, anyways? I can't yes. remember where they're from. I just work here. I just yes, they are from Seno. <laughs> Who just look up and like, oh, I mean, there's a legend back where I grew up <laughs> about three somewhat robotic looking or sounding Pokemon. One was made out of ice, one was made out of steel, and one made out of rock. There's a fourth one, but no one really knows much about that one. It, it, it could be telling you to go catch them. And maybe once you have a mall, something else might pop up, or they might be in the same spot. I don't. I don't th there's not really much known about them. Well, at least I don't know very much about them. Um, with your excellent roll, I'm gonna move it to the world map briefly. So remember, there's a ledger in the top right, but you'd be able to tell them where they are all located. Ice is on J, Steel is on E, and Rock is on now. You know, like kind of get out the map. It's like I mean, supposedly, you know, <clears throat> if if they're real, the, you know, ice would be where the ice is, the rock where the rocky is, and steel. I, I don't know why he's at the mountain, but I guess he just likes the mountains. Hmm. That's fascinating. I'll have to. I'll, I'll make a note of that. We'll have to check into that after we uh, see about this Radita. Yeah. Okay. I'll put this back, but I will be leaving this on the map as additional points of interest to possibly pursue one day. And I'll also let you guys closer to Amityville as your camp is very close to it. Um, Where was it? We're almost there, folks. We're almost there. Um, but, but why don't you guys give me your final scenes of the night before we do uh, outro and stars and wishes. So as you guys kind of eat and play, Pinter's tending to his uh, plants. Uh, the Murkrow is just constantly staring at a curler, but he, he hides because he doesn't want <laughs> pixel, pixel to see. Ratata, oh. actually, for the first time since you've seen him, he's always just laying on his belly. He gets up to look at Banksy in the eyes. And he stands tall and banks she just kind of nods and walks off respecting him um, but what is your final scene as uh and then i'll set the table for you guys leaving and arriving towards amyvale if everything checks out we'll do, i'll do our names for in games i know we're all like who's gonna go <laughs> so, Ajax, what would be your final scene in this sort of relaxing camp? Uh, do you have any thoughts about the big boss Pokemon, your dreams, uh, tomorrow? What's going on? Ajax seems a bit unsettled. He would just kind of get up, walk towards where Chimchar and Pinsar are, and just start, um, you know, start talking to them. And then <laughs> Chimchar and Pinsar would start sparring while Ajax kind of coaches them through it a little bit. As he's just kind of off in his own world, he's in the he's in training mode right now. And you guys would occasionally hear him say, "I got out of I got out of, I got out of one organization. I won't be forced into another. Not by some stupid Pokemon." So, all right, uh, excellent final scene. Uh... Krilla, your final moment. Okay, well, I'll 
Makrula will be kind of getting ready for bed and noticing that Murkrow and Pixel kind of have this rivalry would try to nip that in the bud as quick as possible and tell Murkrow to come perch on her arm and tell Pixel um, to you guys need to make up and at least act like you like each other a little bit. You guys are in the same team now. You need to you need to kind of get along a little bit. Just because Murkrow's here doesn't mean any attention is going off of you, Pixel. And same to you, Murkrow. Murkrow lifts his head up real tall and he looks down and he, you don't hear him, but he says, he says to Growlithe, this used to be your shoulder. <laughs> See, Pixel looks angry. <laughs> <laughs> Pixel be nice. And then and I'll, I'll let you don't, So you don't know the conversation, but he does uh he does try to nestle on your on your shoulder. <laughs> and then I'll call Pixel into my lap and Ophelia um kinda near probably would curl up near my feet. So I'm just like covered in Pokemon at this point. <laughs> yeah, get you a Snorlax. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> So I can sleep on top of me. <laughs> yeah, just like that. Wait, just like zombie. Like yeah. <clears throat> That's a hell of a way to make it. Yeah. So but, as you um, get thrashed yeah. down by your, your Pokemon, the last thing you hear is, bro. <laughs> uh, Opal, your final scene. Um, I would... I think Opal is going to leave the Rattata by the fire for a little bit and is going to take have Geodude help her up and she's going to take Tragicarp over to the bank where the quillfish were okay. and is going to uh, attempt because he's already splashed her so many times. Uh, she's going to attempt to give him a bath and get some of the mud and dirt off of his form to see if he looks a little bit less like a fossil. Okay. One thing you would notice is, two, he's dying. But one, <laughs> um, the the underbelly part of him, that's a little, you see how it's like a, a different color there? It's yeah. more silver than you expected when you wash him. It's very mm. silvery. But he hates being clean, so you see him splash water at you. Oh, yeah. Water would be super effective towards him. Yeah, that's why I say he died. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't Slowly drop dying. him in the water. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> Have fun sinking. Bye. No. Yeah. But before you even think about washing, dude, you see him start rock polishing himself. <laughs> Hey man, you aren't muddy. And then I, I'm holding Tragicarp up by the tail again. Look at this guy. <laughs> He's muddy. You're not Ooh. muddy, okay? Can you rock polish him? He starts doing a slow clap for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you can rock polish him and that would be more comfortable, that's fine. Just let me know. He nods. He, there's nothing he can do. His hands are tied. <laughs> Understood. Tragic Card just looks at dude like, tragic. <laughs> hey, man. Look. Just because we're all rock types here doesn't mean we have to be gross, okay? You've got some really oh. pretty silver under there, okay? Like, let's show that off a little bit more. Let's get some confidence going, man. All right? Let's... Okay, let's let's go. Is he secretly a Fabash? No. Anyways, as you uh, as you just kind of do that, Tragic Carp looks at you and then looks at the love ball, and he wonders. And then he tries to slap you. <laughs> I mean, I won't roll this time. But we'll just say that that's just kind of your scene. You're watching him. He tries to slap you some more. And yeah, and he, it's just a really heavy sigh from Opal. He, he at least tried not to be an asshole for a second. 
for a second. <laughs> yeah. It's getting there. <laughs> That's, that's progress. Yeah. All right. Um, in this in the other area, uh, before you guys woke up in the morning, Picasso would pack up and be like, "Those are some strong young children. I wonder if they're going to come to my city and challenge me." And the uh, and the gym leader sets off. Ooh, the gym leader. Ooh, for uh, Ambervale. Ambervale gym, not the Ambervale gym leader. Um. He's the he's the route you were intending to go to Palmyra. Oh, he's the first gym leader. Gym. Yeah, he's the first gym. Uh, Interesting. But you get see he's boasting normal times. And a ghost. A normal ghost, yeah. Oh, he's a normal mm-hmm. ghost. Okay. That's right. Um, as you guys kind of head off, let's go ahead and put your token here briefly. You don't see any of the Pokemon in the area or nothing like that. You can see there's people in the distance, but you find it. The Hitting Brottle Ambervale Village. And it's many houses that are tucked into the trees. Uh, and that's where the session ends if you guys are looking towards the village, having finally arrived. Amazing. All right, folks. Let's get the stars and wishes and then get you guys the hell out of here. Um, Liz. Your, what was your favorite moment of the night? Any wishes? Um, I really liked the fight scene. The fight scene was super cool. Uh, especially, like, jumping off of Geodude and, like, separating them that way. Yeah, that was, that was cool. super fun. Uh, so being able to be a little more creative um, with that and kind of feeling it a little bit more. Um, I really liked that. Um, as far as wishes, like, you've been knocking it out of the park, like, every single time. I really like the... Um, the camp scenes too where we kind of just like fuck around a little bit um i'm a big fan of those but like yeah you've been like knocking it out of the park every single session so there's no real wishes that i can think of all right awesome i'm happy to hear that uh ward your favorite moment any wishes hmm I think my favorite moment was the uh, interactions with the little Radita and Banksy. That was absolutely adorable, and the poor thing is so sick, and, mm-hmm. you know, the players have an idea of what's happening a little bit, and I don't know if it's going to have a happy ending or not, but it had a happy moment, at least, and that's nice. Mm. That is nice. Do you have any uh, wishes? Uh, nope. The tragic carp went exactly as I expected, and I didn't, you know, knock Geodude out. So it was a good sesh. <laughs> tragic carp slaps you again. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, Fearless, your favorite moment? Any wishes? Favorite moment to reveal that. <clears throat> That the forest that's a fucking mafia <laughs> <laughs> that, that was pretty it's pretty funny what for me now uh, wishes no no real wishes everything has been amazing so far okay sweet and i know it's late folks but that's this episode of pokemans a conclusion of part two and next week ambivale village yeah. everyone have a good night Good night, everybody. Good night.